Today on Public Eye News, a Northern Michigan University professor gets national recognition for her research. And later, we'll keep you updated on the Teamsters endorsement decision in the upcoming election. Nate Diamond will have your weather forecast for the next couple days, and later Austin Graham will bring you today's sports breakdown. I'm Jackson Spencer. And I'm Liam Ulenjoy. This is Public Eye News. The Michigan Department of Education has announced that thousands of educators from over 500 Michigan school districts are now receiving their first payments from the Student Loan Repayment Program. The program is funded by $225 million from the 2024 State School Aid Act, approved by the legislature and signed by Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Eligible program participants in Michigan's Student Loan Repayment Program receive up to $200 per month or $400 per month if at least 85% of pupils in the district or intermediate district are economically disadvantaged. One of the school systems that is receiving funding is Marquette Area Public Schools, which has been allocated $31,200 from the program. And NMU professor Kel Sassi has received the Julia E. Berry Research Award for a project titled Versatility and Resilience in English Alumni from a Rural Serving Institution. The award is part of the National Council of Teachers of English Leadership Awards. Sassi said, quote, Dr. Kia Jane Richmond and I did some preliminary surveys of our English education alumni to find out what sustained them through COVID, end quote, adding that she has never received a national award before. The Berry Award is given every two years. The awards program recognizes individuals who have demonstrated leadership and commitment in advancing literacy and education. Sassi focuses on teaching methods courses for pre-service secondary English teachers and multicultural young adult literature. She is beginning her third year on campus. Wayne County Judge Kevin Cox signed a restraining order against the movement of radioactive soil dated from World War II, from New York to a Michigan landfill. The order comes after a lawsuit filed on behalf of four Michigan townships. The lawsuit says that the public won't tolerate Wayne County being the nation's dumping ground of choice. The soil is from Lewiston, New York, the legacy of the Manhattan Project, where production of the atomic bomb took place. The Marine Corps of Engineers is managing the soil's removal and relocation. They want to put this soil in Wayne Disposal, located in Van Buren Township, 40 miles west of Detroit. The Marine Corps says it's the closest facility for handling hazardous soil, the manager of the Michigan Radiological Protection Section has said that the state has no concerns about the material. A hearing on the issue will take place on September 26th. And on September 17th, Wisconsin Attorney General Josh Call kicked off a series of visits with recipients of the EMS Leave Behind program. The Leave Behind program is designed to let the EMS professionals leave behind overdose prevention tools and resources at the scene of care with the patient, family, or friends. This program will supply EMS providers with funding for the purchase of Narcan and the purchase of fentanyl test strip supplies for the potential victims. The Wisconsin DHS has awarded 21 agencies over half a million dollars for the Leave Behind program. Some of the agencies include Milwaukee County Office of Emergency Management, the City of Milwaukee Fire Department, and Town of Beloit Fire Department. For more information on the program, visit the Wisconsin Department of Justice website. As the school year kicks into gear. Michigan's confidential resource, OK to Say, celebrates 10 years this week. L. Myers of WWJ has more. Take a look. It's been 10 years since Michigan implemented our OK to Say program, which allows students to submit confidential tips about things like potential suicide and threats against schools. We get hundreds of calls every year. State officials marked OK to Say's 10 years in operation outside of Lansing on Monday. The statewide service allows students to submit confidential tips via call, text, email, or through the app. It's a wonderful resource for the students to be able to call. It's confidential um, to feed us that information, and then we have a role and responsibility to disseminate it and do the follow-up to, again, make sure that we can prevent any type of school violence activity from occurring. Last year, reports on bullying, potential suicides, and drugs were most reported through the system. According to Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist, the program has received more than 60,000 tips over its first decade. It only works if people use it. But it's also kids reporting that somebody needs help. And so it's not just about leading to an arrest, but it's also to a kid maybe being able to connect it to support services, can get them a counselor, 
or, or someone that they may need. On the question of Oxford, Gilchrist tells me he doesn't feel like the program failed. Yes, there were there were uh, things submitted via OK to Say, and actually that's a good thing that kids use that platform to be able to submit it. We, we hate that still kids got shot and killed. People got shot and killed there. And so um, every one of those situations is an opportunity to figure out how many more things we can do to prevent violence. Looking ahead to the next 10 years of the platform, the Michigan Department of Education tells me if it needs to adapt to changing tech, it will. We adapt very quickly, which is kind of funny considering state government doesn't move very fast. But in this case, when it comes to um, taking care of children and assuring that children have access to the resources they need so that they can live and do better, then that's really where we put our focus. Reporting in Holt, I'm Elle Myers, CBS News, Detroit. Now don't touch that dial. We'll be right back with your weather and national news after this break. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Okavango Delta. This is nature at its absolute finest. This is crazy. This is a battle. That is powerful. Like a king. Oh my God. Oh my God. Welcome back. I'm Nate Diamond. This is your Public Eye Weather Report. Taking a look at our roof cam today, we see a lot of sun out there and a lot of students getting ready for their weekend. Taking a look around the UP today, a lot of sun everywhere except down in Iron Mountain. That's the only place with a little bit of clouds. Up in Houghton, it's 80. Over in Iron Woods, 73. Iron Mountain, 79. Down in Menominee, 77. Over in Escanaba, we got 75 degrees. Manistique, 74 on the east in Sault Ste. Marie, 79. And back in our beautiful Marquette, it's sunny with a temperature of 81, winds south at 13 miles an hour, and a barometric pressure of 29.85 inches and falling. Taking a look at tonight, we can see maybe some scattered thunderstorms starting around midnight tonight, a low of 63, winds south at 13, and the moon phase of a waning gibbous will be out this evening. And taking a look at tomorrow, partly cloudy skies, a high of 77, a low of 58, and winds south-southwest at 10 miles an hour. And taking a look on to this weekend and in the next week, Saturday, a high of 80, a low of 56, and some mostly sunny skies. Sunday, we could see some rain, a high of 64, lower temperature of 52, and similar conditions on Monday, just with some more sun, high of 64 and a low of 52. And that is all I have for this weather today. Back to the desk. Well, thank you for that weather update, Nate. I personally am ready for that rain. But now it's time for national news, starting with this. The International Brotherhood of Teamsters has announced it will not be endorsing either Kamala Harris or Donald Trump in the 2024 presidential election. Union President Sean M. O'Brien said, quote, Unfortunately, neither major candidate was able to make serious commitments to our union to ensure the interests of working people are always put before big business, end quote. Harris met a panel of Teamsters on Monday, having centered her campaign messaging around support for the middle class. Trump also met with a Teamster delegation in January and invited its president to speak at the Republican National Convention. The decision by the union not to endorse a candidate comes after groups like the AFL-CIO have opted to throw their support behind Harris. And protections for in vitro fertilization have failed in the Senate for a second time. Senate Republicans criticized it as an election year stunt after their Democratic counterparts forced a vote in the body. Democrats started a push to institute federal protections for IVF this year. Their effort was a response to an Alabama Supreme Court ruling that held that frozen embryos can be considered children under state law. This most recent vote on the issue needed 60 votes in favor to approve IVF protections, but only received 51 in favor compared to 44 against. Republican leaders like former President Donald Trump and Senator John Thune have insisted that they support IVF, prompting Democrats to call them hypocritical for blocking the bill. And tensions continue to escalate in the Middle East as strikes in Israel today followed the explosions in Lebanon earlier this week. CBS News has the latest coverage. At a funeral for people killed by exploding pagers in Lebanon. Another blast Wednesday. Part of a second round of explosions, this time according to eyewitnesses, it was walkie-talkies carried by members of Hezbollah, which the U.S. considers a terrorist group. The explosions went off in cities and towns across Lebanon. According to the country's health ministry, 20 people were killed and more than 450 injured in Wednesday's attack. 
The death toll from the exploding pagers used by Hezbollah rose to at least a dozen, including two children, nearly 3,000 injured. We started seeing people all blown up, uh, eyeballs ruptured, abdomen open, bones out, uh, thighs open. It was very terrible. Hezbollah has accused Israel of turning thousands of its communications devices into deadly explosives. <laughs> Yesterday, Israel's defense minister said he believes they're at the start of a new phase in the war, but officials haven't commented directly on the attacks in Lebanon. In Israel this morning, the families of hostages being held in Gaza took to the streets to voice concerns over the latest escalation. Back in the U.S., the White House says it's too soon to tell if this latest escalation will impact efforts to get those hostages home and reach a ceasefire agreement. Sadly. We aren't any closer to that now than we were even a, a week ago. Meanwhile, questions remain about exactly where the pagers and walkie-talkies were made and when they were turned into weapons. We'll be right back with our enemy sports breakdown after this break. Stay tuned. From ladybird deeds to traffic violations, the law can be confusing. WNMU-TV is here to help. Local lawyers. That's that's not even admissible in court. Answering your questions. Caller from Houghton's asking. Uh, this caller from Escanaba says. Caller from Nagani asked. So that's a super complicated question, and here's why. If you say no and you uh, continue to stick to your no, that gives your lawyer something to work with. Ask the lawyers Thursday at 8 p.m. Welcome back. I'm Austin Graham, and this is your Public Eye Sports Report. Kicking things off with soccer, the NMU women's team opens GLIAC play this weekend when they play Grand Valley State and Davenport University. The Wildcats return home with a 2-1-1-1 record after starting the 2024 campaign on the road with dominating wins over UMD and Cedarville University. Justina L'Esperance leads the Cats with three goals and seven points, good enough for second overall in the GLIAC. Meanwhile, Angelina Peritano leads the squad in assists and is second in the conference with two. The Wildcats will host the Devonport Panthers on Sunday at 1 p.m., but not before they host longtime conference rival Grand Valley State, the number one team in the nation, tomorrow at 3. And moving things over to the batter's box, the Detroit Tigers' playoff hopes are very much alive. Tarek Skubal allowed three hits over five innings, earning his 17th win with the club, while Riley Green hit the go-ahead homer for the Cardiac Cats, defeating the Royals 4-2. The series sweep over Kansas City pushes the Tigers to half a game out of a playoff spot with nine games left in the season. Meanwhile, in Milwaukee, the Brewers have clinched the NL Central for the second straight year, claiming their third division title in four seasons. Milwaukee's 2-1 win over the Phillies and the Chicago Cubs' loss to the Athletics sealed the deal for the Brew Crew. As NL Central champions, the Brewers will play in the playoffs for the sixth time in seven years. And in some breaking NHL news, the Detroit Red Wings have re-signed defenseman Mo Ritz Sider to a new seven-year deal. The deal is worth $59.8 million with an annual average value of $8.55 million. Sider posted 134 points for the Wings last season, lighting the lamp 21 times and recording 113 assists. Sider is the last RFA that Detroit needed to re-sign this offseason, as they are just a few days fresh off of signing forward Lucas Raymond to an eight-year extension. Detroit also re-signed forwards Patrick Kane and Jonathan Berggren to one-year deals this offseason, along with the signing of two-time Stanley Cup champion Vladimir Tarasenko. That's all I have for sports. Back to you guys at the desk. Well, thank you for that. Sports update in Austin. Looks like the Red Wings are taking some big swings. We hope that turns out well for them. But Jackson, I wanted to talk a little bit about there's this Music on 3rd event happening tonight. Yes, tonight at 6 to 8, Music on 3rd Street. Um, out on 3rd Street here in Marquette, there will be a bunch of local artists performing for cool. anyone. Well, cool. Well, that's all the time we have left for Public Eye News. I'm Liam Eulenjoy. I'm Jackson Spencer. And we'll see you next time. The preceding program was produced by WNMU-TV, Northern Michigan University Public Television, in studios located in Elizabeth and Edgar Hardin Hall.